Steph Strickland with Geek Wire Studios. We are here at AWS reInvent, and I am joined now by my next guest. Very excited to talk to him about some very interesting developments in the cloud space. I am joined now by Anurag Honda, who is the Vice President and General Manager of Cloud Business at Intel. Thank you so much for making the time. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about what that job title entails. Uh, well, I'm part of Intel, and uh, one of the things that I'm, my team is responsible for is supporting our hyperscaler customers and our strategic customers so that we can design an Intel product so our customers are able to best use those products and then also help their end customers land their workloads on an Intel in a much more optimized way. It's a very wonderful op opportunity for me to work with those customers and make a difference uh, for them. I have to ask this as we get into sort of the partnership with AWS and Intel, how many steps did you log yesterday? Oh, that's a good question. I actually logged over 18,000 steps yesterday. At the end of the day, it was very tiring, but it was a very rewarding day. And I, I intend to possibly uh, up that steps today as I have more time to walk around and have a few other meetings in different parts of the building. It is exciting to see all the ways in which Intel supports some really interesting technological advances. I want to talk about the partnership with AWS. It, it's more than a decade in the making. Let's, let's discuss that. Yeah, it's been a very rewarding partnership with AWS. We've had over 16 years of deep technological collaborations, co-innovating technologies that are helping our customers join uh, their biggest challenges. And while we're doing it through providing customized solutions while providing a great customer experience for them. Uh, our collaboration actually is built on very deep engineering engagements uh, that basically has led to introduction of over 315 Xeon, Intel Xeon based instances wow. on all across all regions of AWS. And this provides the most broadest set of technology configurations and choices for the customers to be able to take their wide variety of workloads and take the benefit of all of these configurations and choices that we're able to work with AWS on. One of the ones that I was reading about actually involved a boosting the telco adoption of cloud native network solutions. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, of course. So uh, at this reInvent, we, uh, we announced our telco cloud uh, uh, native collaboration with them. This is to help the telco boost their adoption of the cloud native network solutions. Uh, this, this is uh, a certification and a go-to-market program that we have finally joined with AWS. And what it, that does is takes the communication service providers and the network operators to leverage Intel Xeon scalable processors to bring their workload onto the cloud, giving them the flexibility, these, uh, I would say, uh, programmability, and the overall TCO or the cost reduction that they're looking for as they build their next generation end-to-end -end network infrastructure. AWS announced the use of the newest Intel product. Tell us about that. This is a big announcement. Yes, it's a big announcement. We're really excited about our collaboration as well as this announcement. So AWS announced their latest EC2 uh, R7 iZ instance, which is based on our fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable processor, codenamed Sapphire Rapids. Uh, this is uh, very exciting because what it does is it is basically a high frequency and a memory optimized instance that gives up to 20% higher performance than existing EC2 instances. Moreover, this is the first x86 based instance that leverages the latest DDR5 technologies as well as provides up to 2.4x higher memory bandwidth. That is going to allow the customers of AWS to to basically have their newest and the biggest business challenges and other challenges be resolved on this instance. So we're really excited about the fact that AWS is taking Intel products and bringing them out and bringing the goodness out and, and all, of, all of the goodness so that the customers can actually leverage the best uh, technology uh, that is available. I'm really excited to talk to you about something that is so important in the way that the work Intel has done is changing and improving lives in partnership with AWS. I want to talk about artificial intelligence yes. and the way these two companies are partnering to make a difference. Yeah, so we've been collaborating with AWS on a significant fashion, uh, as, uh, including on AI. And, and for us, AI is a very critical technology that we have built in into our product line. Uh, Intel's purpose and goal is to create world-changing technology that enhances and enriches the life of every human. And there's been a lot of 
co uh, I would say collaboration that we have with AWS and their end users in which uh, those end users are taking using a cloud on Intel based uh, Xeon scalable processors and creating a, a very positive impact for their societies. I want to share three examples with you. The first is AI Scout. So AI Scout is uh, a company based out of UK, which is helping, uh, I would say, amateur athletes, soccer players who do not have the means to really go get scouted uh, in a sense to, uh, to actually get into a club, different club, because they don't have the means for it. So what they have built a platform which runs on a phone, uses AI and ML, and uses Intel's 3D athletic training technology called 3D technology. What they do is they gather a lot of the data from these amateur athletes that is uploaded onto AWS clouds and shared with different club owners. So the clubs can actually get the data from athletes that they would never have had chance to actually scout and they're able to call them in for trials and it's it's just such a wonderful uh, use model that people are uh, that different companies are creating in order to help sort of these amateur athletes and i'm sure this this is extendable to all other sports as well before we move on to Spark, I do have to make one appeal to you. If you have an opportunity to go look up the video on AI Scout, um, they profiled an actual um, gentleman who was playing football, soccer, in the country in the UK and got picked up and was allowed to go try out and might indeed make a professional football team as a result of the technology. It's one of the better videos I've seen, so definitely check Thank that out. You. Now let's talk about Spark, which is also, this is very important, by the way. Tell me about that. Uh, it's, a, it's a collaboration with Ronin and the Australian National Science Agency called CISRO. And what this, uh, what this collaboration entails is it's taking building AI simulation models to predict the spread of wildfires in Australia. And what they use the data is to deploy the first responders very effectively in order to protect lives as well as to better fight fires and con overall help in the containment of fires, uh, which is very important in saving lives uh, for humans as well as for animals and protecting the environment. Everyone <clears throat> on the planet will benefit from that work, but Australia, obviously the focus, because some of the wildfires there can grow to the size of the state of Florida. So the technology that's being implemented there uh, does make the world a better place, and we certainly appreciate that. Now I have to talk about something that is uh, near and dear to my heart, Peak and Fair Share. Tell me about that. Yeah, so that's a collaboration uh, of a company, AI-based company called Peak. So they're using their AI models and AI techniques to be actually helping Fair Share, which is uh, a charity to give food donations uh, for, for different parts within the UK. And what they are able to do is they're able to use AI simulation models to help improve their supply chain so that the people who need the food get the food before the food gets wasted and able to help logistically uh, uh, fair share, able to provide that food in the right areas and plan their whole future donation activities out so they can plan their operations out. So this has really helped uh, reduce food waste uh, get the food to the right people when they need it. And this is just a wonderful, I would say a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, outcome that uh, Peak has been able to get to help that community out. And this is extendable overall, all the world. And so the benefits of AI are definitely like, it's, it's great to see these companies and individuals use the cloud, use Intel's uh, technology to be able to make a bigger, bigger difference uh, in their uh, local communities, as well as a global impact. One of the charities featured in that particular story was saying that the quality of the food, the nutritional content is unlike anything they had ever seen in all the years of trying to feed people who were food insecure. And it's in part because of that uh, collaboration that makes sure that the best quality food gets to people who need it. It's, it's magnificent, honestly, um, and, and well worthwhile. Yes. I have to talk about something that Intel has really leaned into and made some significant strides that the company should be very proud of, and that is in the arena of sustainability. Yes. Tell me a little bit about where Intel is at in that space. Well, Intel has a large design and manufacturing footprint, and we, we are in a very unique position to make a meaningful impact 
uh, for our industry and lead the industry. Intel was recognized as the number one sustainable company in, by Barron's in 2022. Uh, Intel has set major sustainability goals. The first one is to be, uh, to be 100% on renewable energy by year 2030. Second is to be net water positive by conserving uh, 60 billion gallons of water and investing in freshwater projects that are going to help the communities. Intel's also taken a goal of being net zero greenhouse gas emissions for all of our operations by the year 2040. So Intel's product already leveraged the investments that we have done uh, on this space as well as will continue to do. So we are leading the industry from that perspective, but also we're making an investment and making a lot of our software be much more carbon aware. So what that means is we're able to ensure that the software is using the hardware in a much more efficient fashion. So that is helping reduce the overall compute needs, uh, ultimately reducing the overall energy needs. And this is a great, great, I would say, focus that we have done to make sure that all of our, the resources of the hardware are utilized. One example that I would like to share is our collaboration with AWS on SageMaker by leveraging uh, built-in accelerators on the C6i instances, we're able to reduce uh, or, or be, uh, we're able to be 60% more efficient. So which is a great, great progress that we're making on this front overall. Intel continues to make additional investments. We made an investment in Granulate. So Granulate is a company that Intel acquired earlier this year. What Granulate does is it actually reduces the compute footprint needs uh, for a workload. So they continuously learn uh, about how a compute resources are being used and autonomously are able to optimize the compute footprint, thus reducing power uh, as well as the cost. Uh, and some of our customers have seen uh, cost reduction of up to 60% uh, on, on their compute bills. And it's been really actually, it's really impactful for the TCO or the cost savings for a company, as well as reducing the compute footprint and thus saving power. What an exciting time to be it in is. your role at the company. It is. It's. I feel I have the best job in the company. It is very exciting. And the collaboration that we are seeing at with AWS is just phenomenal. Our depth and breadth of our collaboration, we're so excited about that. It has been an absolute pleasure to have a little bit of your time today. I know you have so many meetings to get to. Thank you so much, Honor Akonda, the Vice President and General Manager of Cloud Business at Intel. I'm Steph Strickland with GeekWire Studios. Thank you. Thank you.